Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? Welcome in. College football gambling picks for week number 14. This is Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I don't have a mic. I'm Chris. <laughs> I'm over here there screwing it is. around on my computer trying to get these lines right. Try, trying to figure out the right lines. I understand. I got them. Last week, I went 3-4-1 and one in college football. Lost $90.91. Chris went 4-2. and two. He won $31.82 on the season. Three weeks in a row, I believe. That's a pretty that's probable a, that's week. That's a positive, positive week. Positive return. Rolling. You are still 39 and 43 on the season, but you are up 9.19 units. So your uh, your big games have uh, hit for the most part. I am 40 and 64 on the season. I'm going to finish week 12. I'm finishing above 500. Well, we're already in week 14, so well, week whatever. 15. Well, 12 games, I guess. I'm, I'm thinking of the teams play 12 games, but they all get two bye weeks. Yeah. How the hell are we in week? We're in 14. Week 14. Yeah, and then week 15, 15, next week is championship yeah. week. So I will finish the regular season above 500. Okay. I got eight games. I'm going eight now. I will not. I won't do that. But I'm going a, I'm to a bet every ounce of money I got left next week. You should pick all the games just to try to catch up. I might do that. Just bet every game. I might do that. <laughs> if you go undefeated, then you can, then you can catch up. That's a, man. That'd be a lot of games, wouldn't it? I'm more so worried about the the money. So I'm I'm 40 and 64. I am down 40.58 units. Uh, Chris is up 9.19 units. Melissa H played our football picks contest last week over at WinningCuresEverything.com. She went nine and one. Won the tiebreaker. Won some cool prizes from Tunica, Mississippi. Very awesome stuff there. You can also go enter the Pick'em Contest over at winningcureseverything.com. It's right there in the navigation bar. You click Football Picks Contest. You enter your name. You enter your email. And then you pick 10 games against the spread. We got seven college, and we got three NFL. And it's only Saturday and Sunday games. So we make it pretty simple. You got to get in by 10 a.m. Central Time, God's Time Zone, on Saturday morning. But, uh, but, yeah, go in and knock that thing out. You can find everything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Our videos, podcasts, picks, previews, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Help us out a little bit. Leave some comments. Share the show out. You know, all the, all the normal stuff that you would do if you support a show, right? And if you're listening on the podcast, make sure that you hit subscribe and that you leave a nice review, especially over at Apple Podcasts. We always appreciate that. It helps the algorithm over there. So, if you would, so kindly, leave a nice review for us. We do appreciate you guys. We are... Uh, Talk about Tunica? Did I, did I not already do that? Oh, you, yeah, yeah, You yeah, may yeah, have. Yeah. I was... No, it's... The stuff it, on the computer. I'll talk about it again. Uh, Tunica does sponsor the, uh, the picks contest, but they also sponsor the show. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination, Tunica, Mississippi. Go check them out. TunicaTravel.com. They got six incredible sports books. You can find more information over at that website, TunicaTravel.com. Uh, they got good stuff in the works down there. And we're not trying to sell you too much crap, but we do have another sponsor that that has come on board. That they're not a, that a premier sponsor, but they, they do help support the show. You Smack Apparel. S- Smack Apparel. Got you some T-shirts. Yeah. All right. It's just it's just a little bit of novelty shirts. Got all the different teams on there. Um, you, your big time college football teams are available, all the pro teams and all the different sports, and and some of it's just talking a little yang about your team, talking a little yang about the teams that you hate. The cheap, but if you get promo code win, you find something you like, you find something you want to buy, somebody for Christmas, whatever. Promo code win that helps us out, and it saves you twenty percent. Yeah, and if you spend over forty bucks, you get shipping. free shipping. It's only available at smackapparel.com. That's S-M-A-C-K apparel.com. Uh, promo code WIN for 20% off. And we appreciate them joining the family. Oh, absolutely. You spend 40 bucks, you get free shipping. Perfect for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I mean, we got Christmas coming up. Uh, or if you just wanted to buy something for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm, just saying. That's, I've already bought myself something. Yeah. I haven't bought anybody else anything. <laughs> But they do have good shirts, and it's awesome stuff. So go check it out. E- even if you don't buy anything, just go visit the website, smackapparel.com. Yeah, check out check. the stuff, because I'm telling you, you're going to find something that you like over there. So 
That's you ready to dive in? I'm ready. I'm ready, man. I, I, I told you last couple of weeks, I loved it. Then I didn't like it, but I still did well. It's rivalry week. I, I love this week. I mean, I feel like I'm going to hit all of these. You've got eight picks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. And I've got eight picks as well. Count it like seven times. I so I keep missing it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I'm going to start us off then. Okay. I'm going to Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers are getting two points at home. That's because Wisconsin is the better team. Wisconsin, I understand they got game day coming in for the first time in forever. But look, it's going to be snowy. It's going to be nasty. It's a wintry mix, whatever. It's 37 degrees outside. The team that is better suited for that is Wisconsin. And even if it wasn't going to be disgusting outside, I still think Wisconsin is the better team. I mean, we are talking about you've got a Wisconsin team that got beat at home by Minnesota 37-15 to last year, got embarrassed at home. And now they get a chance to go and ruin this dream season for Minnesota and keep Minnesota out of the Big Ten championship game, right. and they get to go and, and maybe get revenge on Ohio State for earlier this year? I'm all over the Badgers. Badgers minus two and a half here. I'm doing $200 on it because I love them that much. Okay. Thursday night, Thanksgiving night, we're going to be sitting around the TV. Yes, we are. Belly's full. Kind of getting pushing the limits of how much time we have spent with these people that we only spend time with once or twice a year. <laughs> and I'm going to watch the Egg Bowl. Yep. And it's an interesting Egg Bowl in the sense of all of the – Ole Miss fans that I know and all of the state fans that I know usually hate each other right now. And this past weekend I was with those guys and they were kind of being more decent than they've ever been. And I'll be like, you know, this isn't that big of a game for us. Y'all take it. No, no, no. We don't really want to. You take it. <laughs> I think the better team here, the better coach team and the better team athletically is Ole Miss and they're catching points. I get Ole Miss plus two and a half. Give me a hundred dollars on Ole Miss. I think they're going to win the game outright. All right, so plus two and a half for a hundred. So you are you taking money line? Or are you just taking points? I'm just taking these are all points. Okay, just taking points. All right, that makes sense. That makes sense. Next game up for me. Look, we understand that the Egg Bowl is a nasty rivalry. This one is pretty bad too. Bedlam. Goes a little crazy sometimes. Oklahoma State catching 13 points at home against Oklahoma. Oklahoma has won games by four points, by three points, by one point. They lost a game by seven points. They they don't whip anybody. Nope. I understand Oklahoma State's quarterback is out, Spencer Sanders. The guy they got behind him, 22 out of 29 last week, two touchdowns, no picks. You know, I'm just saying. The architect of that offense is never the quarterback and it's never the receiver. Exactly. There is always the next guy up. It is, is Mr. Gundy. I think he's I think he's fired up. Oh yeah. I think he's ready for this one. I mean he, he had the whole clip where he came out and he was talking about this is a wishbone team disguised as a spread team. We understand you stop Jalen Hurts, you kill the whole thing. Like you cut the head off the snake, the body will die with it. Like I it, I love him. Yeah. Dude. Love him to death. Oklahoma State, I think they got a chance to win the game outright at home in Stillwater. But I'm getting 13. Give me Oki State. Give me the Pokes. $200. Yep. I'm the same way. I'll take the same thing. We'll make this quick. Oklahoma State, 100 bucks. I'm, I'm just 100 bucks on all the games I'm in. And, yeah. Okay. I, I like Gundy. I, I think they got a chance to win this game. Yeah. It's rivalry week, man. Plus 13 for 100. All right. Next one up for me, then. Make sure I get my times right. Next one, I'm going to Troy, Alabama. I know you love when I pick these games. Okay. Troy got beat last week. They did? 53-3. to three. That was not one of their more prouder moments. No. But, it, but it's been like this a lot this year because when they go up against a good defense, they can't do nothing. They miss Neil Brown. Oh, they absolutely do. Uh, but right now, I got App State coming to Troy – with 
probably the best t- uh, defense in the Sun Belt. I'd agree with that. And they're only giving up 13 points. Less than two touchdowns here? I understand App State did not cover the 30-point spread for me last week. I get that. But they did whip Texas State. There's a big difference between 30 and 13. Exactly. I Look, people think maybe Troy bounces back. Troy is the one that's fighting for the bowl bid. They're not that good. They will destroy crap teams. App State is not a crap team. App State needs to put up some crazy style points here. And I think they're going to do it. I think they are going to destroy Troy. That's a good rhyme, right? It's a good rhyme. Sure. $200 on App State, minus 13. Give me the uh, give me the Mountaineers. What you got? Friday night, Virginia Tech, Virginia. All right. That's a rivalry game. Well, it's a Friday morning. but yeah. Friday morning. Oh, it is a noon game, right? Yep. 11 a.m. Central Time. There you go. We like Bronco Mendenhall. Mm-hmm. We have we have kind of talked him up before the season started. We thought they had a, a shot at, at winning this conference this year, and uh, the fight in Fuentes looked like they were on their way out and going backwards. All that has changed, and we live in a different world today than we did five minutes ago. We just <laughs> we just do. It's it's a completely different world that we live in. I don't think. I don't think. Virginia Tech is going to lose this game. I think they have fought and scratched and clawed to get where they are right now. They've started beating the hell out of teams. Yeah. And and that defense it, it is just – they're doing things that I didn't think they were capable of doing before the season started. Fuentes finally found a trigger man, finally found a quarterback, and, uh, and he trusts him. The offense looks capable, looks competent. I'm laying three points on the road in a big rivalry game. Don't normally like doing that. Give me a hundred bucks on the Hokies. I th- I think they make a statement in this game. I mean that that makes sense. Virginia has not beaten them since 2003. That's right. So I totally totally understand that one. That's a I like that pick. Good pick. Next one up for me is going to be Saturday night. And you might you might think I'm crazy. Okay. Tell me how crazy you are. I'm gonna go to Utah. And I got Colorado plus 28 and a half here. Now, Utah has been rolling teams. I get that. But they have been very opportunistic with getting turnovers. They have, they look, obviously they can run the football. Tyler Huntley has been playing lights out. I get it. Colorado, not a great team. They're not, you know, they ain't world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. But they're a feisty team, though. They did beat Washington last week right. at home. And I understand they've got to go on the road. Utah has got a lot of pressure that they haven't had. Like they they just been rolling teams, but now it's all on them. They are the only one loss team left in the Pac-12. They're number six. They got a chance to go to the playoff. That kind of pressure can sometimes eat a team. In Colorado, look at Utah, the the one team that had fantastic wide receivers that they played against was USC. That's right. And now you got Stevie Montez in his last college game. This is a five-win team looking for win number six to get to a bowl game. But you got a senior in Steven Montez. You got LaVisca Chenault. I mean, you you got it, some dudes. This will be the first game since USC that Utah doesn't have the best player on the field. This is 100% true. I mean, LaVisca Chenault is easily the best player on this field. No, no it's not close. It's not close. And... I, I don't know that Colorado wins the game. Although, if they did, would it be that crazy? No, it wouldn't shock Pack me. Pac-12 after dark, man. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so, Excuse me. Colorado plus 28 and a half. 28 and a half. I get more than four touchdowns. Yep. I'm going to take that all day. Give me the Buffaloes. $200 here. Yep. I think that they keep this within the number. Uh, Utah has covered a ton of games in a row. Uh, but I think... It, this might be a little bit of a look-ahead spot. Utah's got Oregon next Friday for a chance to go to the playoff. Everybody's writing this in as a win. That's right. I think Colorado can keep this clear. They can make it scary. Yeah. So, give, give me the Buffaloes. $200 at plus 28 and a half. All right. Go to Philadelphia. Philly. I love the Temple Owls. I think they're a tough, hard-nosed team. A different team when they're at home and they're on the road. And... uh they have 
formidable opponent. The Yukon Utes are coming to town. The Yukon Huskies. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. No, nope. I don't know what a Ute is, but I'm going to tell you this: it's Utah. <laughs> there are no dogs. I still don't know what a Ute is. A, a Ute They're is an Indian. From. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. What was that movie where <laughs> the guy called somebody a Ute? I have no idea what you're talking there's a, about. There's a, there's a movie. Anyway. <laughs> Derailed here. Yeah, yeah. It's the Utah Utes and the Yukon Huskies. <laughs> I've seen Huskies. They're pretty ferocious. Yeah, this team ain't. Yukon's not that. Not that at all. Tibble's going to beat the hell out of them. <laughs> I got 29 and a half points I got to lay. That's fine. That's that's fine. That's easy. They're going to beat the hell out of them. I can understand it. UConn's not scoring. All right. All right. So Tem- Temple minus 29 and a half for $100. All right, I don't like that. I like that. You, you're going to go with the big spread? UConn is getting thrown, hurled out of the America. <laughs> I'm talking old school Uncle Phil throwing jazz out the house <laughs> by the collar and the belt buckle and just all four extremities off the ground. I like it. That's how they're leaving the America. I like it. All right, so you're talking a big point spread. I'm going to move to another big point spread. Come on. Saturday, down in Georgia, the Bulldogs are only giving up 28 to Georgia Tech. Do you know what Georgia does to bad football teams? They beat them up. They destroy them. Yep. Georgia Tech did not score against, uh, who was it? It was... Uh, Virginia Tech? I was about to say, it was Vatek. Yeah, it was 45 to nothing. It was one of the games where Vatek started just turning that yeah. ship. Uh, I understand Georgia Tech got a win last week against a just hapless NC State team. I get that. I understand they're going to be at home. Jeff Collins wants to prove a point. He wants to get in, make some noise. And also know that Georgia has got LSU next week. I get he's, that. He's going to need some dudes to make noise. He ain't got no dudes right now. They will not be able to line up and, and even play with Georgia. And this has 38-3 to three written all over it. Uh, this is one of those rivalry games that Kirby likes to make a statement. Yep. And, and he wants to make sure that, that Collins does not get a foot in the door with any recruits. Georgia wants to be able to take their pick of the litter. This is the easy way to do it. Georgia minus 28. I'm putting 200 bucks on that one as well. I, I like Georgia a ton this week. There you go. All right. Next up. I've been riding Baylor. Yeah, Hot yeah. and heavy. They've covered almost every week. They got to go to Kansas. They got to play my boy Les. I don't think Les and them can hang with this defense. I, I think they're going to smother them. I think they're going to suffocate them. I think they're going to they're gonna beat them up physically. Give me Baylor minus 14. I, I like that. I'm, I'm curious about – so this one was off the board – for like really? a little while. Um, it's it's on the board now, but I was worried about uh, injuries. Um, okay, here's what it was. Charlie Brewer. Yeah, he went out of the game. Yeah, he's upgraded to probable. Yeah, I, I think Charlie's going to play. He's a, that, that dude's a tough SOB, man. Yeah, he is. He, I, he is he is no no frail quarterback. So that, that had to be what it was, right? He is definitely not a Big 12 quarterback. Let's see, linebacker Drew Prox is questionable for Saturday. He's a he'll play. Yeah, he's got a shoulder. I think he'll play. He'll play, he'll play against, he played against Texas, and he was a game changer. Yeah, coming back in that game. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Before uh, he went out, he had eight sacks. He led college football with eight sacks before he went out. That's crazy. He missed, what four games? Three, three or four games. Yeah, something. Came like that. back for the Texas game, and I don't remember how many sacks he had in the Texas game, but he he, he looked good. He started bringing the stats back. Defensively, this team is just – I mean, I've watched a lot of them. I've watched a lot of Auburn. I Offensively, they're better than Auburn. I I think they're probably the second-best defense that I've seen all year, second to Auburn. Yeah. They might be They might be better than Auburn defensively. I mean, that makes sense. So. That makes sense. Uh, next one up for me. Ohio State going to Michigan. I think I'm going to go a different way than you on this one. Okay. That may surprise you. You haven't done well picking, picking games. That's fine. Justin Fields has got a wrist issue. Now, it may not be a big deal, but they, they are already locked in for the Big Ten Championship game. 
They looked beatable last week. Some self-inflicted wounds, etc. And it's going to be nasty outside. I don't think that this gets to the total of 51. I'm going under 51 on this. I'm not going aside. No. I'm going under 51. Why do you think we'd be different on this? That's, are you are you taking the under? No, I'm not touching the over on. I never That's, do that anyway. But why would, I know. Why would we be different on that? But, uh, but it, so I do like Michigan in the spot. But I do think it will be a low-scoring, knockdown, drag-out fight. I think I agree with that. I don't think it gets to 51. Yeah, no, I, I, don't I think this is a game that's played in the in the twenties. Yeah. This could be twenty four seventeen, twenty four twenty one, somewhere around there. I I like the under a lot here because I think Michigan will be able to slow down Ohio State. I think Ohio State's going to slow down Michigan a little bit. I think the weather's going to slow down everybody. Yep, I agree. So under fifty one, two hundred bucks on that one. I agree with all of that. Good. Okay. While we're on that game, give me Michigan. <laughs> Michigan plus nine. I'm going to have some money sprinkled on the money line. I think Michigan wins this game. I've been saying it for three or four weeks. This Michigan team, if you still think they're the same team that barely beat Army and, and got housed by Wisconsin, you haven't been paying attention. Yeah. This is the team we thought they were before the season started. Yeah, 100%. You and this I both a, picked them to go undefeated. We picked them to go 12-0. and and they, it just took them a lot longer than we thought to figure this offense out. Yeah. But once they figured it out, they've kind of beaten the hell out of everybody. Yes. Yes, they have. Yeah, I like the pick. I like the pick. It, it scared me being right under that key number of, uh, of 10. Um, because I, like Ohio there State are no has, key numbers when you think they're going to win the game. It's a very good and point. And I really do think they're going to win the game. I could, I could I, see I, it. I really, really do. And, and let me tell you what I think we're going to get. We're going to get a little college football playoff karma. You want to jump LSU. You want to <laughs> jump LSU when you hadn't beaten nobody. Okay? I mean, Penn State's somebody. Okay. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what somebody they are, but okay. Yeah. yeah. They're not something special. I All love right? it. I love it. They're not as good as Alabama. They're not as good as Auburn. I'd take Auburn over Penn State right now. I don't know that they're better than Florida. Hell, they might struggle to beat Texas. That's a five-loss team. Whew. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> you want to jump LSU? They've run through this gauntlet, and that's not good enough for you? Are you going to put your pride and joy Ohio State on top of the trophy king? They're about to get the ass knocked off. I love this pick. I, lo- <laughs> I love when you get off vengeful. That is absolutely going to happen. Ask Texas what happens when you cross me. <laughs> We're going to go undefeated. You don't want to come to Austin. Five loss team. You're going to lose this game. Wisconsin's going to beat Minnesota. Then you're going to lose to Wisconsin. Get your ass knocked out of the playoffs. Congratulations, Ohio State. You beat up on a bunch of weaklings. Next game for me. <laughs> Saving that to the end, but Gary went ahead and picked that game, so I went ahead and got it. Well, that sounds good. That's it. We, we each got two more. Like, this will be fine. Uh, I'm staying in the Big Ten. Nebraska got a massive win last week, didn't they? Well, I, I, okay. I mean, is Well, it's, massive as far as point total. They they scored a lot on, on Maryland, but... Everybody scores a lot Everybody but Syracuse has scored a lot on Maryland. 54-7 to seven was the total last week. Seems about right. Now, Minnesota, or, uh, not Minnesota, uh, Nebraska gets to go back home. They got a shiny new win. They got five wins on the season. They need one more. They need one more. And I don't think they're going to get it. Iowa's defense is legit. What uh, what are you looking up here? I'm just trying to see how many points a lot of people have scored on Maryland. That's all. Let's see. Michigan put up 42. Michigan, 42. Where am I at? Iowa scored 23 on them. Iowa's not a great – oh, this is 2018. What the hell? Yeah, you're looking at the I wrong too, spot. I went too far. I went too far. There it is, Howard. I didn't mean to derail you. There we go. That's all good. Uh, all right. So, Penn State, Temple 59 Temple scores to 20 on them. 59 nothing. Penn State. They beat up Rutgers. Purdue scored, Put, drops, drops a 40-burger. Indiana, 34. Minnesota, 52. Michigan, Michigan 38. 38. Ohio State, 73. Nebraska, 54. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. 
So Nebraska, congratulations. You, you pulled the average of points that they've given up down <laughs> by scoring 54. Iowa's defense is legit. Yep. They have won four straight in the series. It continues here. Nebraska going up against good defenses. Not so good. No, Not sir. so good. No, sir. Iowa, minus five and a half here. I'm putting 200 bucks on it. I think Iowa handles this pretty easily. Really yeah, want Iowa, to see Nebraska not get bowl eligible. And that's the deal, right? Really want to see Nebraska not get bowl eligible. I think I, just I think want Iowa, Iowa to win the game. I think Iowa handles them. Yeah. I think they handle them pretty easily. Uh they can win by touchdown here. Yep. And and honestly, they like to kick a lot of field goals. You 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 win with two field goals. They'll score touchdowns against Nebraska. I think so. I bet I bet if I went to Nebraska's page, the points that they've given up this year pretty astronomical as well. This is uh this is 100% true. I, I think the teams that haven't scored on them was like Northwestern and Rutgers. Yes. Congratulations. There you go. That's that's the list. What's uh, in what's, Maryland. What's what's your next game? Uh let me go to the Iron Bowl. Okay. I like Auburn. That's I think good. Auburn's the more complete football team in this game without Tua. I thought they were pretty close to evenly matched. Tua is a transcendent player that would have put them I don't know 5 to 7 point favorite without Tua. And on the road, I, I just think this is going to be too much. I think the Plains is going to be fired up. Rarely are they going to have the ability to say, you know, we, we've got just as good of a shot to win this game. Usually Alabama is going to be far superior offensively and defensively. I don't know that that is the case in this game. And uh, I think that defensive front – I keep calling him Matt Moore. I know it's not Matt Moore. It's uh, – What's Mac Jones? Jones? Mac Jones. I'm I'm yeah. I'm never gonna get that right, <laughs> and and neither should I. I there's no reason to know that guy's name right now. Uh, and uh, that's uh, you know that's fine. I think Auburn is gonna have a lot for him. I think he's going to struggle in this game. I think Auburn wins it outright. Give me Auburn plus three and a half. I get more than a field goal. I just think that's disrespect. Okay. I thought this game would end up a, close to a pick'em. And instead, there's there's been a lot of public money on Alabama. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I, uh, I mean, I can't disagree with you a whole lot. Obviously, I'm going to be pulling for uh, for the Tide. Yeah, but. yeah. No, you want to root for your team, and I get that. I just I think that defensive front's different. Uh, you might and, be right. And Auburn struggles scoring the football, but they're not going to score a lot by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think. But they may not have to. But your defense isn't that great. No, I mean that's it. You so got. I think they could score some. You got a valid point. A very valid point. Let's uh let's jump into my last game. Going to Pittsburgh. I like Boston College here. Boston yeah. College needs a win. Look, Pitt had a chance last week going to Virginia Tech. You get that win, you can play in the ACC championship game. And they got destroyed. I about to say they got they got 20, beat to death. 28 to nothing. I mean, just it did not look good at all. Uh now Boston College's defense. Ain't great. Oh no, they're gonna give. Like they're they, gonna score on. They're gonna VC. score, uh, but nine and a half is a lot of points. VC's offense is better than Vitex. I mean, yeah. it, you know, they can really score is. on Pitt too. So I, that that's why I'm saying I don't know that BC wins the game. I think they got a shot to. Yeah. Um, because I think this team wants to play in a bowl game. I think they want to win for Steve Adazio. I think he's a really good coach. But I I also think you know, at nine and a half is just crazy. Yeah, that's too many points. I believe the same thing. I I, I like that pick. Um, you know, I bet a lot of money dog, uh, money line dogs every week just to kind of get some good value, sprinkle around some some things. BC is definitely a team I'm going to have some money line on this weekend. Let's see. I mean, that's happening. I uh, I want you know what? Before I let you get to your last game, okay. I want to look and see because Pitt plays just a ton of one possession games. Uh, let's see. They got housed by Virginia. By 16 points. Uh, they beat Ohio by 10. But then, here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. They lose to Penn State by a touchdown. They beat UCF by one. They beat Delaware by three. They beat Duke by three. They beat Syracuse by seven. They lose to Miami by four. They beat Georgia Tech, who is just miserable, by 10. Um, and then they beat UNC by seven. And then lose by twenty eight. So they don't beat anybody Bad. by by, by double, double digits, digits. Really, that's right. So now you're telling me that they have to win by ten to a team that's fighting for a bowl game. Now this is this is their last shot. They have way more to fight for than Pitt. 
Yeah. Right? I mean, Pitt has kind of nothing to fight for. I mean, Pitt's got seven wins. Yeah, they're going to go to a bowl already, and and it's not really going to change what bowl they go to. No, it's really not. I mean, I mean they got nothing to fight for. You don't really hang your hat on, oh, we had an eight-win season. No, not really. I mean, I guess it's senior day and you want to win for your, your guys. Yeah. But it doesn't – I don't know how much that goes into some of these things. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. I'm with you. I like that play. But either way, I, I think they can get a win and feel good about it. Yeah. And, and they don't have to win by ten. And I think I think Boston College keeps this thing close. So, yeah, give too. me Boston College plus nine and a half for a hundred dollars. I hope they pull out the win. I need it. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> my last game. I'm going to the Apple Cup. This is this is the last time all season. Well, in the regular season, I'm going to get to bet with Leach, and I catch seven points. I don't care what history says in this game, and oh, you know, Washington always beats them. Chris Peterson has their number. Those those Chris Peterson teams were far better than this. This Washington team. I, I just I think Washington's I think Washington State's gonna win the game. Hundred dollars? Yeah, hundred bucks on the M plus seven. Plus seven. Yeah. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, of course, we've told you before, smack apparel. We're gonna talk about it again with uh with our buddy here from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Uh, he's gonna talk about some of the underdogs, some of the big games and whatnot. Make sure you uh make sure you listen in for that. Uh actually Right now, this is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Every single week, we've got TJ Reeves on with us from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He's in to talk some college football with us. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy, and you can get the Three Dog Thursday podcast anywhere that you get your podcasts. TJ, how are things, my friend? We are feeling good. We are heading to Thanksgiving, as I like to say, and I will be saying it several times in the next few days, depending on when they're hearing it. Lots of food, lots of family, lots of football, all the Fs for this week. I hope you boys are ready to get your fill, another F of all of those things, including some underdogs. We once again were knocking them out of the park last week. We had four successful college underdogs on the show. You did have the push. Uh, Gary Seegers with San, San Diego, Diego State, State late night uh, with Hawaii in what turned out to be a low-scoring game. You did say it would be defensive and low-scoring, and it was. Uh, but we, we came through with the Tennessee Volunteers that we were talking about last week. A couple of my other handicappers had Illinois, TCU. That game got very interesting. Uh, we're sitting here talking the week after, and – Jalen Hurts still hasn't gotten to the 42-yard line on fourth down, but I I digress. They they gave it to Oklahoma. They gave them a first down anyway, even on replay review, and Oklahoma goes on to win. So we've done well with the underdogs, and let's hope we can keep it up, boys, here on Thanksgiving week. Absolutely. Of course, it is rivalry week, so there are some massive, massive games. Let's let's go ahead and start down in your state. I mean, you are in Tampa. Florida State (laughs) is going to Gainesville. They're getting 18 points right now. That line has kind of moved all over the place. Uh, Kind of shocking that it's that big. I understand Florida, of course, has played like the better team all season. Florida State has already gotten bowl eligible. Um, But, I mean, I think maybe some of these players might be playing for Odo Hagens to be able to get the job. You're touching on something that I like here with this. Well, first of all, I would like to compliment you that you say, let's go down to your state, and it's not the state of confusion, as I like to joke. It's the state of Florida, uh, where I live. And this rivalry is uh, as, as heated and hated as it is in other parts of the world. I know we're going to talk Michigan, Ohio State coming up. Auburn, Alabama is off the charts. But, I mean, even in the Pacific Northwest, where they have the Apple Cup with Washington, Washington State, uh, on and on with these rivalry games that are coming. It is, it is kind of silly. They played USC and UCLA last week. we got to get the Pac-10 to wake up. That should be the final regular season game with those two uh, because they're playing somebody, both playing somebody else this week, which is strange. Or, well, I think USC's UCLA's got a playing. Buy. Yeah, USC's yeah. got a bye, and UCLA is playing – uh, somebody Cal. else this week. Cal. So it's strange. Yeah. It's strange that they're not playing on rivalry weekend, but you, you know, you can hang your hat on a lot of these different matchups every year being knocked down, drag out. Uh, and by the way, we are talking here midweek on the 25th anniversary of what's known as the choke at Doak when Spurrier and Florida were up 31 to three in the fourth quarter and back came Florida State roaring with 28 unanswered points. 
and tied them. Bobby Bowden elected with less than a, a 30 seconds to go in the game when they got the final touchdown to retie the game with an extra point and not go for two. No overtime in those days in 1994. Not yet. Not for a few more years. So the choke at Doak is 25 years old. I cannot believe I am that old for that comeback. <laughs> but the point is, Brother Giannini, the point is you never know in this rivalry, and that is a boatload of points here in this game. Do you, Chris, do you want to shy me away from Florida State and all of those points? I got a couple of nuggets here, but do you want to shy me away from them? No, I mean, I'm not going to shy you away. I mean, it's a lot of points in a rivalry game. I, I, I'm going to stay away from it. But uh, but if I had to play, I'd probably take the dog. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, at Florida, like if Florida's points. not great at scoring points anyway. I also think Florida's going to be a massive public team as well. I mean, right now on Vegas Insider, like ninety three percent of the vets are on Florida. And let's be honest and, and be kind here. They're offensively challenged at times. They're the Gators. They can yes. they can run it some, although they've had some problems running it. And Florida State is not that good. They did they did get the win at Boston College. They beat a bad FCS team to get bowl eligible, like you mentioned. Now they've had the week off. Are they playing for Odell Higgins' job? And this is how unusual that it is that that is an 18-point line. Over the course of the last eight years going back in research, there's only been one time when the line is more than a touchdown. That was the 2013 FSU National Championship run. Uh, with Jameis Winston at quarterback, he would eventually win the Heisman. He would eventually win the national title with the with the win over Auburn. They were a 29 point favorite. Hello, over over a Florida team that had lost to Vanderbilt and Georgia Southern under Will Muschamp, if you remember, in late November, and were having a horrible season. Florida State was a 29 point favorite and covered the line, uh, winning 37. Seven, covered it by one. So this is an aberration. This is unusual here that the line is this big, and I, I'm leaning heavily towards looking at taking Odell Higgins and Florida State here to at least keep it close. I don't know that they will win in games. So this game also is rarely a night game. It has almost always been a day game oh, yeah. over the course of the last three decades or so. It's a night game. They'll be lathered up in Gainesville. Very interesting game, guys. Absolutely. Of course, you're talking about a night game. Let's move to that morning. Michigan going, well, Mm. staying at home, but hosting Ohio State, who their quarterback has got, you know, wrist problems, possibly. Um, You you got wintry mix. You got snow. You got sleet, all kind of stuff. This seems like a spot. You know, Ohio State looked beatable last week, and they get that number one bump after the, uh, the Penn State win last week. Yes, they this, did. This, oh, I, look, Michigan is playing really, really well right now. I mean, this, well, they, this they is... clobbered, they clobbered Notre Dame. They beat Michigan State, and now this is the litmus test. This is the game at home. You mentioned weather's going to be a factor, and it's a chance to screw it up for Ohio State. Michigan cannot get in the Big Ten title game even with a win because they have a couple of losses. So Ohio State's already clinched. So this is clearly just to mess up. Ohio State's perfect season, and they've been they've been bullied. They've lost seven in a row. It's been since 2011 that they've enjoyed victory in the series. Michigan at home. Uh, I, I'm looking strongly at the Wolverines. By the way, on Three Dog Thursday coming up, Rob Stone, the host of the College Football Big Noon Kickoff. That's their pregame, and the Big Noon Kickoff every every week has primarily been a Big Ten or Big Twelve game. So Rob Stone, who hosts that show with Matt Leinart, Reggie Bush, Brady Quinn, uh, Urban Meyer on that show. They were in Columbus last week, and they were bowing to Urban Meyer. I joked with Stoney, you'll hear my conversation with him. Are they going to have to come in with an armored car that they're riding in for Urban Meyer to be in Ann Arbor doing the live pregame outside the stadium? They're going to probably have better better armed militia than, than what covers the White House or uh, or some of the uh, the traveling <laughs> rock stars here to protect Urban Meyer against the Michigan fans. So in any event, it's going to be some scene, and you're right, it's going to be nasty. Weather in the 30s, wintry mix of, of some rain and maybe snow. Let's see what happens uh, in this battle, because clearly the, the selection committee guys has laid out now that, that this is in Ohio State's hands to be the number one seed if they beat Michigan and they win the Big Ten title game. Now, they could reverse that. If LSU goes ahead and beats Georgia, who's a top-five team, they could slide 
of uh, LSU ahead of Ohio State again, and the significance would be you're not playing Clemson in the semifinal game. If you're in the one hole, you're going to play the fourth team, and that's more than likely not going to be Clemson in either the two hole or the three hole. We don't know for sure, so let's just see uh, how it plays out with the rankings if everybody continues to win. But right now it appears they favor Ohio State to be the number one team if they beat Michigan and win the title game, guys. Now, I am the conspiracy theorist, and Mm -hmm. I, I told Chris last week, I said, if everything goes according to plan, if Ohio State wins, LSU looks eh, even just if a chalk, little bit shaky. If shaken. chalk all holds. Yeah, I, I right. said that they would move Ohio State to one, and they would put Alabama at four. Like, But they needed Oregon to lose. They needed you know something to happen to make it where Alabama could get in. And it's a ratings bonanza if you get Ohio State-Alabama. Like, of if course. You get, if you get LSU-Alabama... Okay, there will be a big number that watches that. There will be a big number that watches Ohio State Clemson. But if you get LSU Clemson and Ohio State Alabama, that it Alabama and Ohio State back in the 2014 Sugar Bowl, yep. yep. was the second highest watched game in the last 5 years. That's over the majority of the national title games. I mean, it it was Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I agree with you. And uh they're they're laying the groundwork leaving Alabama there at 5. Uh, for them to perhaps slide in at four. So you may be right on the conspiracy theory. Of course, there's not a lot of rhyme or reason to this because I, I was convinced uh, back in the second playoff in that uh, in that 2014 uh, scenario that you were talking about. Well, actually, that would have been the first playoff. Yeah. I was convinced they were going to have Winston as the defending Heisman Trophy champion uh, and national champion Florida State to play Alabama in that Sugar Bowl, and they were going to have them as one versus four. But as it turned out, uh, they moved Florida State up and moved Ohio State in uh, that year. So good luck trying to figure out the committee. They'll probably change again <laughs> in the next couple of weeks. I guess that's our mo- motto and method here right now. Uh, but Ohio State moves into the one spot for now. Might Michigan knock them off the perch? This is why it gets really good here this week and Championship Saturday, boys. Now, I've got two games very quickly that I want to hit yep. you up about uh, before we go. We've only talked about Michigan, Ohio State, and Florida State. Florida, there's a couple other pretty big games. Wisconsin going to Minnesota. Minnesota is a home dog here. You got college game day coming in. Any chance very that attractive, talk? very attractive, especially uh, on the heels of them trying to bounce back here because Minnesota still has the faint hope here that if they beat Wisconsin and they beat Ohio State, that they can get in. I don't know what the committee is going to do if that does occur, that scenario where an unbeaten Ohio State loses the title game. Would they take both of them? I cannot fathom that they would take Minnesota and not take Ohio State if it comes to it, but let's see. And you got, this is it. I mean, they got to win this game with Wisconsin or that's it for Minnesota. It's kind of the same thing with Georgia. They're out with a loss in the, uh, in the big, in the SEC title game. And the, the loser in the big 12 title game is obviously out of it with a loss. And I, I don't know what a second loss that is Baylor and Oklahoma. And I don't know that the winner is automatically in too in this scenario. Let's just see. Uh, how how things play out here over the next couple of weeks. But, yeah, you're right. Minnesota, very attractive dog. And did you have one more one on more. the rivalry weekend? One more. I want to go to Bedlam. At Oklahoma's yeah. going to Stillwater. Oklahoma State is catching 13 points. I understand that their quarterback That's, went down. Wow. But, but 13 points seems like it might be just a, a touch too much. Am I, am I crazy for thinking this? And you know, you're not crazy. And Gundy and Ohio State, have, or I'm sorry, Oklahoma State have pulled off the upset a couple of times uh, in this rivalry game. So that this, again, if you're uh, Oklahoma, you have been living dangerously over and over again. We joked about the TCU finish. They barely, shoulda, coulda, woulda, barely hung on and beat Iowa State with the big comeback by the Cyclones where they went for two in the final minute. So uh, behind 28-3 at Baylor, be careful in the Bedlam rivalry game. I, I would agree. You're going to see a lot of strange things here uh, with teams. Back. Be careful if you're Georgia with Georgia Tech. That line is ridiculous. They should kill them. But you can't come out and sleepwalk looking ahead to LSU. 
Uh, and that, that tends to happen sometimes with teams when you're supposed to win easily on the rivalry weekend. Your rival, this is everything for them. Look what Florida International, I know you didn't ask me about it, look what Florida International did oh, yeah. with, against Miami last week. That was their Super Bowl. That's an all-time program-defining game, and FIU played like it. Uh, so that th- this is what we have to look forward to. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. Of course, you can find him on the Three Dog Thursday podcast. Anywhere you can find podcasts, Apple Podcasts, etc. Leave him a review. Subscribe to the podcast. Tell him we sent you. He will always appreciate that. And you can get him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. TJ, we always appreciate you having you in every single week. Uh, we can't wait to hear. I, I believe you got Chris in this week, right? Chris Giannini going to be on with me. Some turkey legs, some stuffing, a little, <laughs> little green bean casserole, some pecan pie underdogs. We got all kinds of underdogs on the table proverbially and guys i know you've been making mention of this i'll mention one more time yes uh, i love our friends at smack apparel and the smackapparel.com offer that we have here on the winning cures uh, podcast with that promo code win it, it's all about rivalry week in college football hilarious shirts no matter if we're talking florida florida state ohio state michigan auburn alabama on and on uh sooners and cowboys the bedlam game Go go check out that selection and use that promo code WIN. It's perfect for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. It, so with, I, I with am the promo so thrilled code. that yeah, you yeah, get twenty percent off. Yeah, yeah, twenty percent off with the promo code. And we tried to get as creative and as original as possible. So we went with the word WIN, W I N, for winning cures <laughs> everything because that's what it's all about. So use that promo code, save twenty percent. Great gifts, hilarious shirts even for the little toddlers and the infants on the rookie wear. So thank you for that plug. We're looking forward to Three Dog Thursday. And here we go with the rivalry weekend of college football, boys. Absolutely. Of course, like I said, find him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. Go get the Three Dog Thursday podcast. TJ, we appreciate you. Boys, love it. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your audience. All right, we appreciate TJ for hopping in here with us. Always a good time. Always a good listen. Go and check out the Three Dog Thursday podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. Find them on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. Smackapparel.com. Use the promo code WIN. You get 20% off. You spend over 40 bucks. You get free shipping. Uh, perfect for gifts. Perfect for everything. They got awesome apparel for any of your favorite teams, pro or college. I'm telling you, you're going to love this stuff. Go check it out for yourself. Smackapparel.com. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter. You're on YouTube right now watching this thing. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button for the video. Leave some comments. Tell us what your picks are over Rivalry Weekend. Uh, Obviously, we want to know what your opinions are. We like to see what's going on here. A lot of you guys have done way better than me this year. So, I want to see what you're talking about. Leave it in the comments. We do appreciate it. If you're listening on the podcast, hit subscribe. Leave a nice review for us. We, uh, We read those things out. We'll read it again next week. Uh, definitely leave some reviews for us on Apple Podcasts. We appreciate that. And last but not least, of course, Tunica Travel, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books. You can go find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Perfect place to get away from the family for a little bit. Go put some money on some games. Go watch some games. Uh, look, they got awesome food, awesome, uh, awesome bars, awesome everything. I'm telling you, you're going to enjoy yourself. Go down to Tunica, Mississippi. You will appreciate it i promise i think that's gonna wrap it up anything else we need to hit no sir that's it that is the college football gambling picks for week number 14 we will see you guys again next time thanks for checking out winning cures everything if you want to keep up with us hit subscribe on youtube or your favorite podcast app visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on facebook or follow us at winning cures at gary wce or at chris b giannini on twitter Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.